So we're, we're just waiting here just to get things right on the uh, that we can put up on the screen for you. So uh, that's why it all seems like we're doing nothing. So if you're, if you're looking on screen, um, obviously a lot of striking out and, um, and stuff. So the, uh, the new A with the highlighted, um, highlighted bit. So um, we'll restart the meeting, reconvene the meeting, and, um, and thank everyone for uh, their patience. Um, during the break, there's been a, a fair bit of conversation. Um, the net result is that the mover and seconder of the amendment have withdrawn that amendment and we have come up with some amended chair's recommendations, which, as you can see, um, establish a one-off scheme um, of up to $5 million, and uh, the CEO um, will be tasked with uh, setting out how that money is to be utilised. Um, and so what I propose is that Ken Turner will move those amended chairs recs and I will second them. And sorry, there was a bit of a line up, Greg. Um, and, uh, and so I know we had Julie and Josephine for questions uh, lined up. Um, no, so we pull those and are there any questions of staff? I'll give you a couple of seconds to read those. Are there any questions of staff of those changes? Just, Excellent. Sorry, just on, on the new A, I think we've missed out a word there. We've crossed out, uh, so impacted by damage to private access on road reserve or in road reserve, there, there needs to be a word between access and road reserve, I think. And that was the intention. Yeah. It's just a it's just a typo. Well picked up. Chris. So just for clarification, um, there was some um, some contradictory explanation from paragraph 55 going through the table below about precedent setting and non-precedent setting. So I'm assuming, Chair, we don't need to spell it out in every possible word, but I'm assuming within this direction it is non-precedent setting. I yeah, it refers, the resolution refers to one off, and it's well understood that the arrangements are non precedent setting and will be designed at the detailed level in, in that manner. Yeah, totally get that. So we can say one off, but somebody years down the track says, but what about them? And it was a one off then, and I'd like another one off, please. So I, I, I won't. I won't um, take up more time, but I think my main emphasis as we detail this up is that it is very specific about it being non-precedent setting. Can I just clarify with, it, it is covered in D, is it not? Yeah, directly. Okay, and my apologies because I'm struggling to see it. 
I'll just make a quick comment on what Councillor Darby's raised. I have experienced in the past as a minister putting papers through where we made it clear it was a non-precedented setting, except and it was explicit as you could get. And it got challenged in the court, and the court threw it out and said, you can't just pick them and leave them out when they weren't in, and it now covers more people than you had originally. So you can put it in as much as you like, but if anyone challenges it, I've got a feeling the courts will take a dim view of what precedent really means. Okay. Okay, then no further questions. Um, staff, you can... Uh, oh, sorry, honey... Um, it's a little bit to do with the non-presidential presidential setting and we're making a one-off scheme for a certain selected group. Is that the clarity we're saying here? And that one selected group are for the 37 properties that have been impacted? With, with the group being defined by certain circumstances, yes. Um, Mason Craig? Uh, I'm, uh, look, yeah, I'm just wanting that clarity. And, and why I'm saying that, it's because for Māori outcome, we're, there is a selected group, you know, and the, there's quite a lot of challenges taking it through. I'm just, yeah, just the clarity. Mr Chairman, it will go broader than the group, so that's one of the, one of the challenges on an equity point of view, but this group is... I, quite specifically. I, I think when we're using the word group, we're not specifically and only referring to the STAR situation. Correct. Uh, just through you, Mr Chair. So that is the clarity that the group is it's open. Correct. Okay. Uh, there are no further questions. We'll, um, we'll uh, ask you to step back. Thank you, uh, team. Um, tricky situation, and, uh, but a worthwhile conversation, and um, thank you for your advice. Uh, okay, so now we open it up um, for debate. Uh, I think, uh, Daniel, you have a comment? Yeah, look, thank you, Chair, um, for your indulgence. Um, look, I, I mean, I strongly support these recommendations. I would have actually been okay with the amendment. Um, I mean, the road reserve, the road reserve has a lot of of public benefit, and there's a lot of public infrastructure in the road reserve. There are pipes, there are footpaths, there can be scruffy domes street lights, curb, all manner of things. Uh, the topography of the area that is affected, the road reserve is constrained by these, these winding roads in Titirangi, um, but there are road reserves everywhere. The reason why this area was affected, obviously, is the weather, but the topography of the road reserve in this location. And Council does work, uh, and Auckland Transport does work to uh, do betterment in the road reserves from time to time. It happened in my way. Pauri Kau Road was a case in point. The ratepayer funded betterment in the road reserve because there was public benefit and amenity to that. We are talking about people being able to access their property. They access their property from the road reserve. I think that Ken Turner has done a very good job in advocating for his constituents over a long period of time. And goodness me, these residents have been waiting two years. If people have concerns about about, uh, about uh, whether uh, this is uh, the appropriate recommendation, well, you know, um, perfection can be the enemy of the good here, um, but these people have waited two years and they are seeking assistance to get access to their properties. And I think that's an appropriate thing for us to move on. And I wouldn't want to delay this. The final thing that I will say, Chair, is that I accept that um, at looking at this um, money, and a lot of it will be spent on the capital costs, um, Auckland Transport will have some capacity for the design, for the design, the consenting for works. My only hope will be 
that the the works that are to be designed that we try and reduce as much as possible the traffic management planning costs that are associated with some of this because um, that's the thing that I think makes people feel very very constrained uh, um, is that is that we we have a budget for a project it could be a basket of capital projects but so much is gobbled up through traffic management so i would ask that the officers work with auckland transport to try and minimize that so that we can maximize the investment to remediate in this particular part of the auckland region and um thank uh, councillor turner for his advocacy thank you daniel get well soon Desley. thanks chair um I think we've come to a really good place, Chair. I know this has been fraught with a lot of discussion, a lot of debate, and I think that we just need to recognise and thank a few people. First of all, Auckland Transport. You know, they have been at the table locally. Uh, the particular Auckland Transport rep that has been involved in this is a local resident in the area and has done everything in his power to find a solution that doesn't put a financial burden on council, i.e., working within the budget. And I think Auckland Transport need to be acknowledged for that. I think um, the recovery office need to be acknowledged as well. They were tasked with a job of coming back with a number of solutions, and they did that, and that they have worked within the, you know, the confines of what they have, both financially um, and, and the, the, the responsibility they have with the Crown, et cetera, to, to come up with a solution uh, that I think is working well. Um, my next thanks, of course, is to the local councillor um, and to you, Chair, for coming up and, and not making this an, uh, an adversarial thing. It was something that you have... I know that you came to the table collectively at slightly different places and that you have worked towards a solution. But finally, I want to thank the Star Group. Not once, and I have met with you probably six times, not once... Have you been adversarial, angry, or of a manner that is uh, aggressive towards council? You have come to the table willing to discuss, debate, and move. I know what you really wanted, and you haven't got what you really wanted. But you have made concessions as well. And I think as a group, you can be very, very, very proud of the way you have handled yourself both collectively and in this chamber. So thank you. I will be supporting these recommendations and I think collectively I ask my colleagues to support them as well. It is a solution that is fair, non-precedent centering, budget is capped, and I think it provides surety to the people who've waited two years and still got nowhere. Thank you. Thank you, Desley. Richard. <laughs> thanks, Chair, and thanks to you and um, Councillor Turner for coming to a compromise position. And I know that sometimes people do get annoyed with my uh, long, winding questions, but I, you know, I have been on the political group with um, Deputy Mayor, Mayor and Councillor Watson for the category buyouts, and we did have to make some very fast, very significant calls there, and we then had to go back to government begging to change rules for 2C and 3 and things like that, and we've left people off um, because of quick decision making. So I think this is a better position. It gives people far quicker access to to this process, and I think it will open the door. And as um, <coughs> Member Renata talked about, the group, I think it's very clear. It's exactly the same as the category um, buyout process. It's attributed only to those affected by the 2023 North Island weather events and those affected with the road reserve. So it's very specific. Um, it's clear in these cases, and I've spoken to some of the star group in the break, that I think we should still be looking for other options, not just in this five million, but if there are clear cases of pipes and other things involved with this process, that should be worked in with an existing budgets and, and had another look at. I've worked with residents and sometimes got my way and sometimes not on the shore, where actually it's, it's a double or triple um, asset provider that needs to work together uh, um, to help get through. And if it means doing some emergency works and getting a certificate of compliance <laughs> afterwards, um, then that should be the way we do it to get things done faster. I know that the government and others will be 
maybe a little less, a little more flexible with the RMA under these situations. But I think this is a good position to come to, and we just need to help more people. Thanks. Thank you, Richard. Josephine. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to support this because it's a, a solution, but it's not the solution that the uh, residents at the back ask for. And my concern with this is that it almost puts the onus back on the private owners, pro property owners, as opposed to us as council because it's our land. Um, and it just seems unfair. Like, I'm so glad I don't own a house next to a road reserve because I don't want to be in the position that they're in. Um, but it is a way forward and it is a solution. So I acknowledge Auckland Transport, Auckland Council staff, the recovery office, um, Councillor Turner, Councillor Leone for putting this up as, as, a, as, a, as a solution. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, I'm, I'm giving Ken the final, the, the rights to speak last. And so I'm just, anyone else have a con, um, comment to add? Nothing online. So, uh, Ken, all yours. Thank you. <clears throat> I just want to say thank you to everybody, staff and members. Um, I want to um, say to Councillor Hill, I know I wear my emotions on my sleeve, and when I bark back at you, it's never intended at anyone personally. Um, yeah, it's, it's got us, it's got a stake in the ground. Um, I think there's, uh, as usual, it's going to be about delivery. And I think there are areas in here that could do a definition, but not in this place. I know that we'll work through that uh, as the staff work with individual issues. So um, really, I think we're all on the same page, and I'm looking forward to it passing. Thank you. OK, no uh, further comments. Um, I am going to, uh, to put this. All those in favour say aye. 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 Carried. Thank you. Thank you to staff and thank you to uh, the members of STAR. I see you out there. It's a little bit emotional. We are, um, we are embarking on our annual plan process, so, um, you know, um, keep up the fight and good luck with uh, what you've got ahead. And thank you for, uh, as Desi said, for the way in which you've, em you've engaged. So thank you very much. OK, get myself back in order. Next item is uh, 